me <laughs> comments on this last video have gone off a bit in the Jesus Christ it's safe to say they're not going to be commenting anymore I don't really want this to take over I mean I know it's taken over my life a little bit but I don't want every video to be uh, a big uproar about Leon Right, so Marie's just gone to work on the bus. Um, she's only doing one clean, so she'll be like two hours. Um, but her friend is still asleep in the van, so I can't really go in there yet. So I'm going to do a little bit of training with Leon. I don't really want this to turn into a, a completely dog orientated channel, but I want to show you a little bit of what I've been doing that you haven't seen because it's my own fault I've only sort of put the bad stuff in I guess and I've not shown you how well he's actually doing and as you can see right now you know he's very chilled out there's no problem whatsoever and this is how he always is in the van buddy um, Unless I leave, then he has the separation problem. I've not worked on that much yet, so that's fine. That's not a big deal. Let me show you what I used to train him. Um, some people recommended using a slip lead, which I did at the start. But because he's so strong and because he's so... Like he's clearly never had any lead training in his life. He was gonna, he was gonna seriously hurt himself using one of them, so it wasn't practical. So that's why I've gone for the prong collar, which I'll show you. It's one of these. It looks really mean. It looks like some kind of torture device, but it's actually very safe. Um, of how it works obviously you link it together like this and you don't need to do a lot it's not like you're proper yanking them on this you only need to apply a bit of pressure and it gives like 360 pressure all around the neck um, but just to can I fit it on so you have to make sure it's in the right place on them as well uh, I did a lot of research on this before I got it um, a lot of people use these wrong, they have them too loose and then it drops down and then it doesn't work properly um, and then you're having to apply more pressure than you need to um, let me just get this kettle so here you go, look, as you can see it just sits on the neck like this and normally you have this bit to the side so he'd be walking on my right side and that's to the side so what it does, you really don't need a lot of pressure. All you have to do is when he's not doing right, you just lift the lead slightly. It's not like you're ripping them apart. It's not comfortable at all, but it, it gets your attention, definitely. <laughs> I mean, the, the pins aren't sharp, they're rounded on the ends. Um, but it's supposed to simulate, in a pack, the pack leader well this is the theory behind it anyway the pack leader would alert another dog if it was doing wrong by its mouth you know by nipping it or whatever and that's what that's supposed to simulate it actually works really f***ing well uh, but I just thought I'd show you it on me because I'm sure people that aren't aware of what they do you know it does not It does look a bit menacing the first time you see it I thought that as well but I can tell you right now if I was a dog, I'd much sooner have that around my neck rather than a, a slip lead because you're essentially getting hung on a slip lead. And with the problems he's got at the minute, especially if it's so, the way I work it is while I'm training with him, so I keep that on me, and then I also have him have him wearing a harness as well, just with this small lead off, off. Just with this little lead always on his harness so that if um, if a dog comes and I have to deal with that situation or something else 
I'll grab this and I'll pull him on that because obviously I don't I won't want him proper going for it with that collar on or whatever because you know anything around the neck can damage him um, so yeah this is like the backup just in case I need to get a good firm hold on him see look anyone who says he runs rings around me to put his harness on now he puts one paw out I put one link he puts the other one out I put the other loop in like I'm you know <laughs> It's not like I've not done any work with him at all. Just the only thing that I don't know how to fix is the dog aggression. You know, that's it. Other than that, he's actually a really bloody good dog. This is why I made a point to address the people and tell me I should get rid of him because this side of him you haven't really seen. So I'm going to show you now. Folks, we are in Marie's van, which you haven't seen yet. So I'm not going to spoil it for you. It's got a window though. I can't really hide that. I'm just going to do the the window tip. Come away, come away. Because it's a pretty easy job to do. But. I'm guessing there's quite a few people, or well, there's at least some people that don't know how to do it. So, got shit all over this window. So what you want to do first is obviously give the window a good clean. That's sealant. Why is it got sealant? So what you can do, if there's any bits on a window like this, just use a razor blade and you can normally get stuff off quite easy and it doesn't scratch the glass as long as you're not too rough with it you just have to hold the blade flat on the glass and then most of the time you can get stuff off I'm not going to be able to do this completely properly because we don't have a spray bottle to put the soapy water in so I'm going to have to try and figure something out for that I'm not sure exactly what yet but I'll come to that in a moment Leon's my new assistant he's joining me I can't show him though because then I'll be showing you the whole van and there's the fun in that saying that though if you've got me on Instagram you'll have seen it anyway but for those that don't, we'll keep it as a little surprise when the tour video comes out. Which I should be filming in the next few days, hopefully. If all goes well. Right. 
So, normally the way that you do it is you do it from the outside, you spray it, you do the cut, um, then you sort of do it that way. But because this window is a bit weird and you've got the little groove there, I don't think we're going to do that this time. Just going to do it straight from the inside. So, what I've got a little bit of washing up liquid in a glass mixed with some water, only a bit. You don't want too much, it's just a bit to give it a bit of lubrication. That needs to stop. Uh, this is probably not going to go on perfect because I'm not a professional, so let's just clear that one up straight away. Right, so here's my window film. It's uh, limo tint black. So you have two sides to it. There's an adhesive side, and then there's like um so the tint itself has got sticky back. Then there's like a backing material on there. So we're just going to cut it with so that I can gauge roughly where it's going to go. Use a spray bottle for this. So normally what you do is get an empty one of these and put your soapy solution in this and it's a lot easier. But we don't have an empty one so I'm going to use a flipping sponge which is not ideal but right now it's all I've got so we'll give it a go. So just find out which side your which side it splits. All right, here we go, see, if you can see, look, you split it and then you have a clear layer and then your actual tint. So this side of the tint is sticky. So I've got that peeled back now. So what I'm going to do, just wet that window again because it's dried off a bit, is just lay this on. Just roughly. That's going to give us our rough size. You just cut the excess off. I mean, there's a million and one flipping videos on YouTube how to do this, so I don't know why I'm doing it really, but. You can definitely find better. Mine's going to be a bit of a bodge. So you wet the top of the window, wet the top of the film. And what you're going to do, this is what you need a squeegee, it's just like a piece of flexible rubbery plastic. And you just run that across, and that'll, what that does is push the water out from under the film and makes it stick. So this is just, we're pushing it into the gaps, and this is just while I make the actual cut, so I've not took the sticky off yet. Just push it all the way in, all the way in the cracks in the sides, right down to the bottom. Just like that. You do take your knife and you're just going to run it along the edges. Now, when you get to the bottom, you pull outwards and it rips the film. So, I'll show you that here. Look, so make sure it squeezes into the gap, run your blade, and then you rip away from the film and it won't tear into your piece. Just do the bottom. So the sticky back isn't taken off this yet, so it'll come off really easy, look. So now we're going to peel it off the spray bottle. So what I'm going to have to do, as soon as this touches anything, that's it, it's, it's wrecked. So you just get your soap on there straight away. Get that nice and wet. It doesn't matter how wet it gets because obviously you're going to squeegee it out at the end. Just 
as soon as it's wet with the soap, you can pretty much do what you want with it. Just want to make sure you don't get any bits on it. That's the main thing. I think I've got a hair on it already, as you can see. Which is not great, but... Seriously, don't do this. This is the first time I've ever done this with a sponge. Just don't. Don't do it to yourself. It's a pain in the arse. It's already annoying me. And then what you do, take your sheet, the right way round, obviously. Which is like that. Just lay it on at the top. Give it a wet now on the outside so you don't scratch the film. Try not to press this, like, yeah. This is where your spray bottle comes in because I'm going to end up pressing this down now and getting air bubbles in it. Pretty much there. And you just get your squeegee and you just run it. Start with the top, run it across like that. Go right up to the edge. I'll probably have to do this again, but Marie's going down to Chamonix for the night so that's why I'm sort of trying to get it done quick now. You can just work your way across like this and that will then push all the air bubbles out the side. You just got to make sure you don't crease it, that's the trick. As soon as you crease it, I see you can't get that out. So don't crease. Once you sort of push all the juice out then it uh, it sticks, then the adhesive sticks to the glass. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but there's not really anywhere else to put the camera in for it. Yeah, it scratched the shit out of the film though, so I'm gonna have to redo it. Unfortunately. But yeah, if you've never done tinting before. Pretty much how you do it. Definitely better off with a nice fresh squeegee though. Not this piece of crap that I've got. Has worked, it's just scratched it a bit. See look. Obviously that's now tinted compared to that. So it's definitely a big difference in light. Look at the exposure difference without changing the camera. Yeah, I've got the other side done now. I've got this. Sorry to uh, cut you off a bit short earlier. Um, Marie came back from work and then they wanted the van, so I just had to sort of power it out quickly. But it's done, it's not a great job. Uh, one went on really nice and then the other one went a bit crap. But, oh well, it'll do for now, at least she's got some privacy now. Because you could just obviously see straight into the van before, which is not ideal. But they've gone off now, down to Chamonix. And they're going to have a night on the town again. Um, you'll probably remember what happened last time. <laughs> she uh, went out on the Chamonix town with her mate on a Saturday night. Oh, my head! Yeah. Tell the world, because they're very curious. Oh, I don't feel like talking about it right now. I've just been sick. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just up here. Dinner for one. So we're going for a can. These are alright to be fair when you can't be bothered. Sausage and lentils. I'll stick a bit of something with it. Don't know what yet. Yeah, sorry the videos aren't particularly great, like, interesting at the minute. Um, it's not really doing anything. But, you know, it's just how it goes. And I, I'm, I'm a little bit in limbo at the minute. So I'm just trying to figure out what to do about England. Um, I think I said it in the other video. I had a plan, uh, and then it's gone a bit wonky. So, I mean, it's fine, you know, it, I'm sorting it out. It's not like a massive deal but it means I'm just having to rethink everything a little bit um, 
because I can't do what I was going to do. Yeah, so it's sausage, lentils, like a gravy thing, and cheese on top. So it's kind of, I like to think of it as a poor man's shepherd's pie. <laughs> or a person without an oven. There you go, so this is where he sleeps at night, look. He's not too big for the van at all. That was a ridiculous comment. Got his bed on the floor, which is like six layers of big thick blanket that I got. He can turn around in here fine, he's got plenty of room, his food and water's here. I think I think he's got it made, to be honest. Look at that, does that look like a miserable dog? <laughs> it's a sleepy dog. Just been for a walk. But yeah, I, th I think he's he's perfect in here. Any bigger yes than that would be pushing it. He's at the limit. But he's very agile and he's very slender, so it's no problem for him at all. See? Right folks, just been uh, watching a bit of Breaking Bad and it's time for time to peace out. Let's all hope Marie's still uh, alive in the morning. <laughs> Alright, I'll catch you all in a bit. Before I go, if you're um, if you're enjoying the videos, just uh, give them a quick like. Maybe drop a comment in there. If you've got any ideas or anything, you know, it's a it's a free space, so feel free to share whatever you want. And if you're not subscribed already, go ahead and uh, hit the button so you can keep up to date with what's going on, because you know me plans there's no point making them because they change every 10 minutes so the best way to know what's happening is to keep up with the videos <laughs> right i'll see you all later